So many questions I must ask myself today. I wonder if Jesus thinks I've done my share. Will I wake in the morning to find regrets upon my mind? Or will I leave a trace of Jesus somewhere? So many questions I must ask myself today. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Evangelist Doris Chapman of Doris Chapman Ministries. Amen. I am here being sent by God. Amen. I'm here with the word from the, from, from the Lord. I'm here to lift. I'm here to help. I'm here to direct. I'm here to hear whatever God say and then say it unto you. Amen. My life is a miracle. Amen. There's many things that God had brought me through and brought me out. And I come by to tell you today, amen. I didn't went, but I was sent. Glory to God. Amen. So I came by to let you know, no matter what you're going through, amen, you can make it and you can take it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today was my first taping. Amen. I want you to pray with me and pray for me. Amen. But mainly open up your heart. Amen. I will not give you information, but I will give you revelation. Amen. Coming from the word of God. Amen. So to, today I want to start and just tell you a little bit about where God brought me from. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. When I was 13 years old, uh, my dad and I were sitting there talking. And daddy said, uh, we saw some people bringing bodies on the train. And I said, daddy, I said, uh, why are they bringing all these dead bodies on the train? He said, that's the way they transport them. And we got into talking about dead bodies. And then all of a sudden, my daddy said to me, he said, you know what? He said, I'm going back to church Sunday and give my life back to the Lord. Amen. And, you know, I, I believe my daddy. Glory to God. I love my daddy. Amen. Hallelujah. I didn't have a great relationship with daddy because he always worked. But people of God, amen. My daddy said in Sunday he's going to give his life back to God. But on Friday, while I was in school, glory to God, amen, I felt a tug in my heart, and I felt something had popped, and all I could hear was daddy. Then I saw a lady come in, a young lady come in, and said, Doris is supposed to come down to the office. There is an emergency. I went down to the office. They didn't have to tell me. God had already told, told, told me that something was going on with daddy. Daddy had just gotten killed. And I got to thinking, when I got home and seen all daddy's clothes, and I got to thinking, Lord, daddy said he was going to come to church on Sunday. At least you could have waited until Sunday before this happened. But daddy died on Friday. So when they had the funeral, I'm sitting there seeing my daddy in a suit. Never saw my daddy in a suit before. Daddy always worked. He was, he was an entrepreneur. But I sat there and I watched my daddy in that casket with a suit on. And in my mind, at 13 years old, I thought my daddy's all dressed up and nowhere to go. People of God, I told God, I said, Lord, come into my life. Save me, deliver me, whatever I have to do. So I won't be like my daddy, all dressed up and nowhere to go. God came into my life that day, glory to God. And after daddy died, I was a very passive person. Amen. How many know if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for everything? I was raped. I was beaten. Come on. I was called a liar. I went through many things. Amen. Ended up pregnant. Amen. At the age of 14 years old. And I didn't know where a baby come from. I didn't know what was going on. I tried to hide the pregnancy. When my stomach started swelling, I tried to tie a rope around my waist so nobody would know. But when it finally came out, amen, I was put aside and I couldn't go anywhere. But the child came forth. When the child came forth, they took the child from my womb, made me sign the adoption papers, and ran her away from me. For 15 years, I prayed and I prayed. And God, hallelujah, brought my child back to me. Why? Because I began to minister to everybody else's child. Amen. And when you begin to plant a seed into somebody else, it will come back to you. Come on now. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Amen. So that part of my life, amen, was, 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 was going, you know, pretty good. When 
I got a phone call that said, do you still help children? I said, oh, yes, I help them. They said, well, here's a young lady. Come and help her. I began to speak to her and began to speak to her and pray for her and come to find out she said, you don't know me. I said, no. She said, I look like you. I got hands like you. I got a nose like you. I know your, you know, your son Calvin. And I thought, like, who are you? Here it was, my child. Come on. Hallelujah. And so as I was giving to other people, God brought my child back into my life. And I asked her, can I come and see you? Her, her, her mother at the time, she let me say, yes, you can come. I went to the house to see her, and she said, wait a minute. She said, I've heard a lot of things about you. But after talking to you these few minutes, it cannot be true. She said, I want you to forgive me. Amen. I forgave her, and she said, this day you can have your daughter back. Look at God. Come on now. Hallelujah. You can't tell me what God won't do. Amen. God will make a way when it seems like there is no way. Amen. So my life just went on, and then I was being misused by this one and misused by that one because I had not a daddy that I could run to. And then in school, I met a young man, and I would always want to help people. Didn't know I was a preacher. Come on. And so I would help this young man, and, and I kind of, you know, like that little puppy love thing. And, and we kind of got kind of close, and we talked and talked. But however, he went his way, and I went mine. Twenty years later, I met this man again. And to meeting this man, amen, he began to say to me, you know, um, what are you doing in your life? And, and, and why don't we go out to lunch? And why don't we do this? And I allowed this man to attach himself. Remember, I told you I was a passive person. Amen. I didn't stand for anything. Amen. You know, because if you're not taught that, amen, you're just like a shell. When a turtle comes, his neck comes out, something comes at it, he'll clip and go back in. And I fell for this thing. And this man began to pull me to the altar. And I kept thinking, no, I don't want to go to the altar. I don't want to get married. I just want to help you. Amen. But of course, if you don't stand, because I didn't put up a resistance, he pulled me all the way to the altar. I allowed him. When we got to the altar, amen, the minister said, do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I didn't, but then I did. And that was on from there. We were married 11 years. He would beat me and the police would come and they were afraid of him. But to make a long story short, one day I went to work that night and I came home. And when I came home that morning, that, that night, well that morning we got up and he had been out and was in some trouble. And he kept saying, I believe the police is looking for me. However, the man began to tell me, he said, you know what? He said, I'm 27 years old today, and I'm going to die today. Then he looked at me. He said, you know what? He said, you're 26, and I'm going to take you with me. Hallelujah. And as this man began to say that, I sat up, and I said, don't talk like that. But then he had a 32 automatic pointed at me. And I sat up, and he said, sit back, Doris. When he called me by my name, I sat back. And this man shot at me the first time, and it missed my neck, just burnt my neck. And then he shot the next one. He shot me in the ring finger, and the, the hand went back. Then he shot me in the shoulder, and it lodged up under my esophagus. Then he shot me in the wrist. And after he had shot me four times, and he had another bullet, amen, I heard a voice deep down inside of me and said, Get up and go to the bathroom. Amen. And this voice spoke out of my belly, not out of my head. How many know when you hear things in your head, that's not God. That's you or the devil. When God speaks it out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. So I heard a voice, glory to God, deep down inside of me. Nobody told me that God speaks to ordinary people. But I come by to tell you tonight that God does speak. Amen. You might be on drugs. You might be an alcoholic. Amen. No matter what you've been through, God loves you just the same. But people of God, amen, and this voice told me, said, get up and go to the bathroom. This voice did not tell me to go in the bathroom. It said, go to the bathroom. Amen. When I got up and I began to walk, he's standing with the gun still pointed on me. And I began to walk, and I'm bleeding now internally. And I began to stagger. But when I got to the bathroom door, this voice told me, now, you see, until you obey step number one, you'll never get step number two. Amen. So when God said, now, go in the bathroom, when you get into the bathroom, I want you to lay down on your back. Do not lay on your stomach. If you lay on your stomach, you're going to suffocate. 
Hallelujah. Tell me that God won't give you first aid. He won't tell you what to do, how to do it. Amen. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. And when God said, now, I walked into the bathroom. When I walked into the bathroom, he said, lay down. Amen. Already shot four times. Hallelujah. But God gave me the strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. God gave me the strength to lay my body down. And when I laid down, remember he said, amen, lay on your back. Do not lay on your stomach. How many know obedience is better than sacrifice? As I laid down on my back. My husband at the time, he came back in and he stood over me and he held the gun down as far as it could go. And he shot me in the bottom of my lung. When he shot me, I, I tasted gunpowder and I could feel the blood just begin to boil coming up in, in, my, in my stomach. And it came up to my lips. But I heard the same voice speak to me and said, stop breathing doors. Amen. Hallelujah. When he, this voice told me, I didn't know who it was at the time. But he said, stop breathing. When he said, stop breathing, I held my breath. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. When I held my breath, they told me it applied pressure to the artery and made them clot. Amen. He, my husband left out. My ex-husband left out. And amen. And when he left out, I'm laying there. Glory to God. But I heard this voice said, I want you to go over to the wall and get you two towels. There was a rack with towels on it. Amen. If you obey God, everything you need, God will abundantly supply it. Amen. But you got to be there, people of God. Amen. As I went over and I got the towel. Amen. And I got a face towel. He said, get a bath towel and get a face towel. You see, you got to listen exactly what God is telling you. Profoundly, God will speak. But you got to listen. Amen. I'll just give what I want to get. No, no, no. Uh-uh. Amen. I got the bath towel. I got the washcloth and drug back in, out of, into this blood. By this time now, it's like black liver. Amen. So as I laid there, he began to tell me to take the bath towel, which was rolled. Amen. And I, he said, put it under your head. They told me if you elevate your head over your heart, you will not go unconscious. It'll be hard to go unconscious. It'll keep you alive longer. And then he told me with this hand and the bones are coming out of this finger, he said, touch it. This man had turned around and cut my whole wrist all the way to the bone. Amen. My whole body jumped off the floor. Come on. Amen. But God told me, he said, just touch it. Amen. How many know that the joy of the Lord is your strength? You may not have the power. I can't do it. I can do all things through Christ because he strengthens me. And when I obeyed God and God told me to take the washcloth and just lay it on my hand. My hand had guts coming out of it. I moved my fingers. You could see everything down inside of it. And when I, it was bleeding, about 10 or 11 inches of blood, just flowing, flowing, flowing. But all of a sudden, when he told me to touch it, amen, hallelujah, it stopped bleeding immediately. My, I, I just laid there for a while. All of a sudden, I began to go into like a semi-coma. And I began to fall into utter darkness. I heard another voice come to, come to, I heard another voice after going through all of this. And this voice said to me, he said, I got you now. He said, I got you now. Now, when I heard that voice, that voice was in my head. That's the day that God gave me discernment how to know his voice from the devil's voice. Amen. But this voice was in my head, said, I got you now. And immediately, glory to God, I began to fall into utter darkness. Amen. And as I began to fall and fall and fall into this deep darkness, there was nothing I can see. No one around. Amen. But it was an eerie feeling. Glory to God. But let me kind of bag up a minute. While I was laying there on the floor, I began to pray, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. As I was praying, I looked to the right of me, and I saw Jesus. I saw a vision of Jesus. He was standing in clear air with sandals on and a white robe on with a rope around his waist. And he began to stand up over me and he told me this, shh. So many times we need to learn the vocabulary of silence. Amen. We talk too much. Amen. Come on. Amen. He told me to be quiet. He looked down at me and he said, I, the Lord, am your shepherd and you shall never want for anything. Come on now. He said, you shall never be afraid because I'm with you. My rod and my staff is here to comfort you. People of God, I did not know this was God. But all I know that whoever was talking, I had a peace about it. Come on now. You may not know when God is speaking that it is God, but there's a peace about it. The devil won't bring peace. But God will. 
when he told me that, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I would not have to fear the evil because he was with me. That's when the enemy said, I got you now. And that's when he threw me into outer darkness. But how many know that God would bring you out of darkness into his marvelous light? If you just hang in there, hold on just a little while longer. Glory to God. And as I begin to fall and begin to fall and begin to fall, I begin to fall into that darkness until I remember what thus say the Lord. Amen. You got to put God into remembrance. He said, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He said, I'm with you. And when I remember that, all of a sudden I stop falling. When I stop falling and going down, I begin to go up like in an escalator. And way up this tube, I could see a light, and I begin to travel. As I traveled, I saw doors laying in a, in a pool of blood. But I was gone. But I traveled all the way up. But when I got to the end, the light was so bright that I could not see. And I knew then that God was saying, you got to come back. And I began to come back into my body. I shook, and I looked at the clock, and it was saying it was after uh, 3 o'clock. And I thought, I'm back. But I saw doors. Amen. Then when my husband came back in, amen, I heard a voice say, and I said, I know God doesn't lie, but he did say, agree with your adversary quickly while you're in the way with him. And when he came in, I told him, if you bring, he had, had my sister to come, and I was supposed to get her a job. So she was my ram in the bush. When she came in, he jumped on her, raped her, throwed her down. But I, the Lord told me to tell him, if you bring her in, I'll tell her that I did this to myself. If you give me the gun and the razor blade that you used. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he did, and he, and he fell for it, brought my sister in. He gave me the gun and the razor blade. I'm kind of going over too fast, but, but, but you hear what I'm saying tonight. Hallelujah. When, 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 when this man, after he came back in, he stood over me and he began to say, I love you, but I got to do it. I, I heard him in the medicine cabinet. But when he came down, he had that razor blade. My hands were turned. He turned my hands over and he spoke. He said, I love you, but I got to do it. And with that, that's when he cut my wrist all the way to the bone. All the way to the bone. And the blood began just to stream. Just to stream. But people of God, he gave me the gun, he gave me the, the razor blade, took my blood and put over it. Hallelujah. He put over it to take his fingerprints off. My sister, and he's on his knees crying. And my sister's standing and she's in shock. And I told her, listen, tell mother and tell the police that he didn't do this. I did it to myself. I was willing to take the blame that he would go free. Hallelujah. Isn't that like Jesus? Come on. Hallelujah. But let me kind of back up again. I went to church that night, Sunday night. And he had said if I go to church, he was going to kill me. I made up in my mind I was going to church. I said, for God I live, and for God I was going to die. When I came back home that night, he jumped on me and choked me, and my tongue came all the way out of my mouth. The kids ran down to help me. He said, if you don't get back upstairs, I'll kill you. The children ran, and God made him drop me. People of God, I stood, I stood on God's word, laying in my own pool of blood. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. I'm kind of going backwards, but the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He said, you know what? You went to church Sunday night and you joined the church. They were singing, this may be the last time. It may be the last time, I don't know. And I got so tired of them singing that song over and over and over. And I kept thinking, I wish they'd shut up. But all of a sudden, I found myself going up to the altar. Gave my life to the Lord. And they gave me the microphone. And I asked them if I did anything to cause anybody to stumble, forgive me. I made everything right. But laying in my own pool of blood, he said, you joined the church Sunday, but you can't join this church. You must be born into it. Hallelujah. You must be born into it. See, we go to church religiously. Amen. A form and a fashion. But we don't ever, hallelujah, want to begin to look at Galatians 5. That fornicators, liars, adulterers, come on now. Amen. Those people, you cannot enter to the kingdom of God. But he told me that you've got to repent. I said, what do you mean? He said, you've got to become godly sorry for everything you've ever done. And let me tell you something about dying. Come on. 
That when you die, your life flashed before you. I saw Doris. I saw the things I had done. I saw the people I had hurt. But every I saw my mother, I saw my father, I saw my children, and all I could say was no, no, no. But oh, that's when I saw on the right hand side, that's when I saw Jesus. I saw him for myself. Amen. I saw Jesus for myself, and I said yes to the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's why that I'm still here today. Amen. That even that when my sister told him that that uh, that. I did it, and she would, you know, call the police, and I told him, I said, listen, before you leave, before you leave, I got one more thing to say. The bullet was lodged up under my esophagus, and I told him, I said, listen, I still love you, and I forgive you, amen, and with that, he left, and that's when she called the police, but go back a minute, I still love you, and I forgive you. Amen. I do not believe I would be here today had I held on to unforgiveness. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen. And so I begin to see the, how God's life and my life begin to, to line up together. Glory to God. No one taught me just Jesus. And with that, he ran. He was gone for 11, for 11 days running. But when the ambulance finally got there, amen, they began to work with me and ask me questions. I said, just get me out. They got me to the hospital, amen, and they told my family, look for the worst. Said she, she's been shot too many hours. All of her blood is gone. Every vein is deflated. There is absolutely nothing we can do. Hallelujah. But I heard a voice, hallelujah, in that bathroom. And that audible voice said to me, you shall not die, you shall live. I heard God for myself, people of God. Amen. Glory to God. And see, when you hear God for yourself, hold on to what God says. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Hallelujah. There's no excuse. Nobody taught me. If you get in the face of God and get a relationship with God, God will teach you himself. But he said, no, you shall not die, but you shall live. Amen. And I held on to that. No matter what they said over me, it's just a matter of time, she's going to be gone. And they come in and peek in the window, in, in, the, in the, the emergency room, thought I was dead. And I'd, I'd look at them and i said, but my God said I'm going to be all right with that bullet under my esophagus. Shot in the top of my lung and in the bottom of my lung. Amen. So I heard them say, doctor, if you want to save a woman's life, come and save this one. The doctor came in and he took a tube and he put it on my side and drilled it between my ribs. And there was a gallon jug laying down there. And the blood began to run out. Glory to God. I was hurting. I felt like I was going to burst because I had bled so much internally. But this doctor, God had the right man at the right time to be there for me. And this doctor began to, to pierce me in the side. And the blood began to stream out. Glory to God. And the more blood went out, the better I felt. Hallelujah. Then they kept waiting on me to die and waiting on me to die. Amen. And all of a sudden they said, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to call Cleveland. That's a larger hospital. They called Cleveland, but they sent for a funeral home to bring the hearse because they knew there was no way for me to, to be alive. There was no way for me to make it. The hearse came and wrapped me up in army blankets. And they took me to Cleveland. Amen. They had the highway patrol because my ex-husband was running. So the highway patrol was leading us in the front and in the back. Come on now. With God, you go first class. Look at God. Amen. And that, there was a nurse. They put a nurse in there. And she had on a white outfit. And the doctor had on a white outfit. That nurse had her hand on my, on my chest. And she kept me, you know, uh, from shaking. But she never said a word. And the doctor said over there, he never said anything. But when they got me going 120 miles an hour, I told them, y'all need to slow down. Y'all going to kill me. They got me to Cleveland. They were waiting outside. They rolled me to the surgery. They said, nobody's here to sign. The hand that was cut in two pieces, God allowed me to sign it. Signed the papers. They took me to surgery. When they got me to surgery, they got the many of the, the uh, bullets out except one. All the particles they got out. Then my heart stopped. And they said they tried to no avail to get me back to living, to get me back to breathing. 
So when they could not get me back to breathe, to, to, uh, alive, they pronounced me dead and tagged me for the morgue. But God, remember in that bathroom, God said, you shall not die, but you shall live. When I come through eight days and I was out of that hospital, took the Fifth Amendment, wouldn't even press charges. God said, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Hallelujah. When I got out of the hospital, I was going everywhere to tell everybody thank you. But I went to the funeral home and, and the guy said, oh my God, you made it. I said, yes. Who was that nurse? Who was that doctor that rode with us? So I can tell him thank you. He said, what doctor? What nurse? There was no one back there but, but, but you. I know I saw that nurse, that nurse. I know I saw that doctor. But guess what God said? The angel of the Lord is encamped around them that fear the Lord. Amen. This is just part of my testimony. That God brought me out. I walked out. I got wires in my chest. Wires in my hand. Come on now. Wires in my finger. But I'm all wired up. Amen. So I can get in tune and in touch with God at all times. So what am I telling you today? Glory to God. All that I've been through. Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous but God will bring you out hallelujah he's no respecter of person but he is a respecter of faith and if God did it for me truly he would do it for you if you're trusting come on now amen you can't trust God and then turn around and worry you can't trust God and call on everybody else it's got to be God and God alone hallelujah I had no one nothing to, to lean on but God and I'm still here by the grace of God Hallelujah. To let everybody know. Hallelujah. Five bullets in my body. That's supposed to have done it right there. Then to cut my wrist all the way to the bone. And then to lay in my blood. Don't you know the life of the flesh is in the blood? They said, how can she be living and there's no blood? Every vein is deflated. Don't you know that the God that I serve, the God that you serve, he was giving me an invisible blood transfusion? The life of the, the flesh is in the blood. My dirty blood, I was laying in it. But God gave me a blood transfusion. And it's to God be the glory. And I thank God tonight. And I pray to God, amen, that that's something that God said, amen. You know you can identify with it, amen. Don't give up on God, for he never gave up on you. My life is a miracle, but so is yours. And until next time, 10 o'clock, every Sunday. Amen. Doris Chapman Ministry. My life is a miracle. Amen. And so is yours. God bless you. So many questions I must ask myself today. I wonder if Jesus thinks I've done my share. Will I wake in the morning to find regrets upon my mind? Or will I leave a trace of Jesus somewhere? So many questions I must ask myself today. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turner, Team AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network. What's going on y'all, it's Mr. Bell. Some know me as Anton Choirboy Bell. Others know me as Elder Anton Bell. I am co-CEO of Bell Global Network, VGN TV 2090. And I want to invite you right now to get your own broadcast. I'm calling all ministries, all politicians, all business owners. Get your own broadcast right now, starting at $99. And if you have an idea for a TV show, we can bring your idea to reality. We have packages available that include production, and facilities. Also, we have advertising packages starting at little $25. So don't hesitate. Give us a call at 313-355-7877. Once again, that's 313-355-7877 to make an appointment today. You never ever let me down and when I'm sinking and sin, you never ever let me drown. You're my life, girl, my security. You took my insecurities to put me in the lion's den and took out all the fear of me and gave me a limit to undeniable faith. In your arms, I am safe, and for that I give you praise.
My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy, D. Hattie, watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network.